Southside Demon Daily. I'm Michael Poirier. I'm here with Francesca Silvalotti, um, one of my fellow Canadian teachers and tutors at LSAT Demon. How are you doing, Francesca? I'm fantastic. How are you? Doing great. Uh, Francesca, we have a response email from Brandon. Would you be able to read it out for us and see what he has to say? Yeah, for sure. So this is Brandon responding to the podcast that we uh, recorded last week, um, episode 135 of the Demon Daily um, show. And uh, let's see here. So he said, I'd like to offer a retort to one part of the episode. Perhaps he could forward this email to Michael. In the episode, he emphatically disagreed with my statement that it is much easier to get into law school in the U.S. and used his personal experience as evidence of that. Common flaw on the LSAT. I'm sorry, that's just me jumping in. <laughs> Although it may be true that getting into the top 10 law schools in the US is more difficult, he was incorrect in disregarding my statement. To argue my point, using the LSAT scholarship estimator, you can theoretically get into some very low ranking schools and receive a scholarship with a 2.0 GPA and 150 LSAT. In Canada, you have no chance of getting into any law school with those stats. That is just one extreme example, but the point is to demonstrate that in general, you can get into US law schools mid and low ranking with stats that you would be automatically rejected from all Canadian schools with. Okay, so I have two, two things I wanna say about this. One, whether it's true that you would be automatically rejected at Canadian schools and a point about the kinds of schools that Brandon is bringing up here uh, in the US. Point one, so, Brandon, it's like on the LSAT, it's important to keep in mind word strength here. So to say we have no chance of getting into any law school in Canada, I'm not sure that's the case. You mentioned in the last episode, a few law schools in Canada that do not report their LSAT and GPA medians. These are exactly the kinds of schools that you'd be able to potentially be able to get into, depending on how the rest of your application plays out. If you have a compelling personal statement, resume, um, some good, some strong letters of reference. Um, in particular, uh, the University of Moncton and some of the French schools in Canada actually don't even require the LSAT. So you have to ask yourself, is it easier to score a 150 on the LSAT or to not write it at all? In which case I would say probably to not write it at all, right? Uh, Francesca, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, totally. Um, well, first of all, Brandon, thanks for listening and writing back. I think it's great that um, Absolutely. follow through on that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, I don't, I don't entirely disagree with, with what Brandon is saying, but this kind of, my thought on this entire question is that it's not, it's not the best question to be asking. Like, is it better to get into law school in the U.S. or is it, or sorry, is it harder to get into law school in the U.S. or in Canada? Or the answer is really that it depends. Uh, it depends on what your goals are, right? Do you want to be getting a JD from just about anywhere? Uh, do you want to practice law, have a chance of getting a job? Do you want to um, make a certain amount of money or have a certain amount of flexibility with your career? Um, you know, just getting into law school uh, might be part of the goal, but it is rarely the entire goal. But also it, it depends on where you land, whether it's at the high end or at the low end in, in terms of numbers of, um, how attractive you are generally as a candidate for law school. And it also depends on the kinds of law schools that you end up going to. Um, so yes, you know, it's, um, I agree. I agree with what you're saying, Michael, that it's possible to get into some, it might be possible to get into some Canadian law schools with some extraordinarily low numbers, especially if you've got some other, I don't know, pizzazz to your application. You've done some pretty cool things in your undergrad, you have some work experience, whatever it may be. Canadian law schools do tend to have more flexibility in terms of, overlooking or looking over certain low numbers um, in favor of other parts of your application, just because Canadian schools don't have to report those numbers. So it, it, it's possible. Um, I'm not sure that it's likely. I'm, I don't think that, um, I think that maybe if you have a 2.0 GPA and you know below a certain number LSAT, then maybe there are other career choices that might suit you better. Something to think about, because that might save you a lot of money, right? What do you think about that? Absolutely agree. And that the answer to this question is always, it depends. Uh, a 2.0 GPA for any graduate school, whether that's in the US or Canada, is going to be very difficult to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, to put this into perspective, the median LSAT in Canada, roughly, 
for if you're a middle of the pack law school is roughly around a 160. You need to get below the 80th to 100 ranked school in the United States to get to that. The kinds of schools that Brandon is talking about here, the select few schools that he mentioned you could receive a scholarship at are gonna be on the very, very low end of ABA accredited schools. And yes, I know they're ABA accredited, but are these law schools offering scholarships or are these, as Ben and Nathan like to put it, predatory law schools offering scammerships? To put this into perspective, um, I took the three schools that you mentioned. So you mentioned a few schools uh, using the scholarship estimator that you could get a scholarship at. Um, they, I looked it up and ended up being Faulkner, Western Michigan, and Widener. Of those three, Faulkner is the highest ranking. At Faulkner, you could get a roughly $8,000 scammership. Um, <laughs> it's a funny word, but it, I think it does apply in this case. Oh, yeah. Scammership to Faulkner with those numbers. Tuition at Faulkner is about $39,000 plus cost of living. Uh, ends up being around $67,000. Minus the scannership, you're looking at $60,000 tuition a year. By the time you factor in interest, you're looking at $210,000. And the median salary at Faulkner coming out of law school is roughly $48,000. With a $48,000 salary, are you going to be able to pay off that $210,000 that $210, law school debt? Likely not. Okay, so it's, just, it's important to put this into perspective what kinds of schools are we talking about in the US versus Canada? There's gonna be something for everyone. Um, there are obviously gonna be certain schools that are harder to get into, some that are easier to get into. It's absolutely possible to get into these schools uh, and to get into some law school with these numbers in Canada or the US. Um, it's obviously gonna end up being a lot more difficult. And will it actually be worth it is, is the point we're trying to get at. Yeah, so just kind of to sum that all up, um, yes, in theory, you could probably get into some some very low rank law schools in the US with those numbers. And Brandon, I do agree with you. And I also I appreciate the fact that um, that Brandon is sort of picking apart Michael's logic and saying, hey, that's an N of one, you know, <laughs> your personal experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is only my personal experience, it's only anecdotal yeah. evidence at the end of the day. And we are we were only referring to um, the top end of law schools in that instance. But yeah, as Francesca mentioned, how do we really compare the US and Canada? What do we mean when we're talking about difficulty of Canada versus the US? Are we talking about the top end? Are we talking about the median outcome, the low end? It really depends. Yeah, so if you're asking which one is it easier to get into, well, it depends. Do you want to go to a law school that is not going to result in a ton of debt and <laughs> probably a lifetime of trying to pay off that debt? Um, do you want to get a JD that you can use? Um, yeah, we have to be asking more precise questions. And of course, one of the best ways to avoid getting into all of this uh, debt, I guess, <laughs> is to try to improve your application where you can. And if your GPA is largely determined at this point, a great place to start is with the LSAT. Right. Um, like we always say, don't pay for law school. Yeah. Thanks, Francesca. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admission news. Thank you for listening. Thank you.